To ensure you don't miss a single Hardware Unboxed video, hit subscribe, then tap the bell. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Over the past few weeks, I've been looking into and exploring the world of FreeSync 2. Now, this isn't a new technology. It was first announced at CES 2017, but it's only now that we're starting to see the FreeSync 2 ecosystem expand with new display options. As HDR and wide gamut monitors become more of a reality over the next year, there's no better time to discuss FreeSync 2 than now. And from what I've been reading online, there's a fair bit of confusion around what FreeSync 2 really is, how it functions, and how it differs from the original iteration of FreeSync. This video will explore and explain FreeSync 2 as the technology currently stands, and it's a little different to the tech AMD announced more than a year ago, while a detailed video coming in the next week will go through my impressions of using a FreeSync 2 monitor. Here's a quick refresher on the original FreeSync. The name FreeSync is just a brand name that refers to AMD's implementation of adaptive synchronization technology. This tech essentially allows a display to vary its refresh rate to match the render rate of a graphics processor so that, for example, a game running at 54 FPS is displayed at 54 Hz, and when that game bumps up to 63 FPS, the display also shifts to 63 Hz. This synchronization reduces stuttering and screen tearing compared to a monitor operating at a fixed refresh rate, say 60 Hz, displaying a game running at an unmatched render rate like 54 FPS. FreeSync requires a few modifications to the display's internal controllers, and also a compatible graphics processor to function. NVIDIA's competing technology that achieves similar results, G-Sync, uses an expensive proprietary controller module. FreeSync is an open standard, and in fact it was adopted as the official Visa Adaptive Sync standard, so any display controller manufacturer can implement the technology. The core technology of FreeSync is just this one feature, Adaptive Sync. Display manufacturers are able to integrate FreeSync into their displays through whatever means they like, provided it passes Adaptive Sync validation. A monitor certified as FreeSync compatible only means that monitor supports Adaptive Sync. There's no extra validation for screen quality or other features, so just because a monitor has a FreeSync logo on the box doesn't necessarily mean it's a high quality product. And this is where FreeSync 2 comes in. It's not a replacement to the original FreeSync, and it's not really a direct successor, so the name FreeSync 2 is a bit misleading. What it does provide, though, are additional features on top of the original FreeSync feature set. Every FreeSync 2 monitor is validated to have these additional features, so the idea is that a customer shopping for a gaming monitor can buy one with a FreeSync 2 badge, knowing it's of a higher quality than standard FreeSync monitors. Both FreeSync and FreeSync 2 will coexist in the market. While the naming scheme doesn't suggest it, FreeSync 2 is effectively AMD's brand for premium monitors validated to a higher standard, while FreeSync is more of a mainstream option. You're not getting old technology by purchasing a monitor with original FreeSync tech. In fact, the way Adaptive Sync works in FreeSync and FreeSync 2 is identical. Instead, FreeSync monitors simply miss out on the more premium features offered through FreeSync 2. So what are these features? Well, it breaks down into three main areas. High dynamic range, low frame rate compensation, and low latency. Let's tackle HDR support first. When AMD originally announced FreeSync 2, they went into detail on how their implementation of FreeSync 2 was going to differ from a standard HDR pipeline. FreeSync 2's HDR tone mapping was supposed to use calibration and specification data sent from the monitor to the PC to simplify the tone mapping process. The idea was the games themselves would tone map directly to what the display was capable of presenting, with a FreeSync 2 transport passing the data straight to the monitor without the need for further processing on the monitor itself. This was in contrast to standard HDR tone mapping pipelines that see games tone map to an intermediary format before the display then figures out how to tone map to its capabilities. Having the games do the bulk of the HDR tone mapping work was supposed to reduce latency, which is an issue with HDR gaming at the moment. That's how AMD detailed FreeSync 2's HDR implementation back at CES 2017. While it sounded nice in theory, one of the key issues raised at the time was that games themselves had to tone map specifically to FreeSync 2 displays. This meant games would have needed to integrate a FreeSync 2 API if this HDR implementation was ever to succeed. And we all know how difficult it is to convince a game developer to integrate a niche technology. As FreeSync 2 stands right now, that original HDR implementation isn't quite ready yet. AMD's website Spruiking FreeSync 2 simply lists the technology as including support for displaying HDR content, and there is no mention anywhere of FreeSync 2 supported games. 
And when you actually use a FreeSync 2 monitor, HDR support relies entirely on Windows 10's HDR implementation for now, which is improving slowly but isn't at the same level AMD's original solution is set to provide in an ideal environment. The reason for this is FreeSync 2 support was only introduced in AMD's GPU Services 5.1.1 in September 2017, so game developers have only had the tools to implement FreeSync 2's GPU side tone mapping for a bit over 7 months now. Getting these sorts of technologies implemented in games can take a long time, and right now there's no word on whether any currently released games have used AGS 5.1.1 in the development process. One of the features AMD mentioned as part of their HDR implementation was automatic switching between HDR and SDR modes, so you could game using the full HDR capabilities of your display while returning to a comfortable SDR for desktop apps. Unfortunately, this too doesn't seem to be functional right now. Instead, FreeSync 2 once again makes use of Windows standard HDR implementation that doesn't handle the HDR to SDR transition too well. However, while the implementation might not be anything special at the moment, FreeSync 2 does guarantee several things relating to HDR. All FreeSync 2 monitors support HDR, so you're guaranteed to get an HDR capable monitor if it has a FreeSync 2 badge. FreeSync 2 also ensures you can run both Adaptive Sync and HDR at the same time for an optimal gaming experience. And finally, AMD states that all FreeSync 2 monitors require twice the perceptual color space of sRGB for better brightness and contrast. It's unclear exactly what AMD means by twice the perceptual color space, but the idea is a FreeSync 2 monitor would support a larger than sRGB gamut and higher brightness than a basic gaming monitor. And it does appear that AMD's FreeSync 2 validation process is looking for more than just a basic HDR implementation. So far, every FreeSync 2 monitor that's available has been announced meets at least the industry standard display HDR400 specification. This is a fairly weak HDR spec, but I have seen some non-FreeSync 2 supposedly HDR capable monitors fail to even meet the display HDR400 spec. So at least with FreeSync 2, you're getting a display that meets the new minimum industry standard for monitor HDR. Of course, some monitors will exceed Display HDR 400, like the original set of Samsung FreeSync 2 monitors, such as the CHG70 and CHG90. Both of these displays meet the Display HDR 600 spec. Ideally, I'd have liked to see FreeSync 2 stipulate a Display HDR 600 minimum, but 400 nits of peak brightness from Display HDR 400 should be fine for an entry-level HDR experience. The second main FreeSync 2 feature is reduced input latency, which I briefly touched on earlier. HDR processing pipelines have historically introduced a lot of input lag, particularly on the display side. However, FreeSync 2 stipulates low latency processing for both SDR and HDR content. AMD hasn't published a specific metric that they are targeting for input latency, however it's safe to say 50 to 100 milliseconds of lag like you might get with a standard HDR TV would not be acceptable for a gaming monitor. How FreeSync 2 is achieving low latency support in 2018 appears to be more on the display side than the original implementation announced at the start of 2017. As I mentioned when discussing FreeSync 2's HDR implementation, the original idea was to push all tone mapping into the game engine to cut down on display side tone mapping, thereby reducing input latency, as a display's slow processor wouldn't need to get involved as much. As games haven't started supporting FreeSync 2 yet, today it seems this latency reduction is purely coming from better processing processing hardware in the display. For example, current Samsung FreeSync 2 monitors include a low latency mode which is automatically enabled when FreeSync 2 is enabled. The final key feature is low frame rate compensation. This is a feature that goes hand in hand with Adaptive Sync, ensuring Adaptive Sync functions at every frame rate from 0 FPS up to the maximum refresh rate supported by the display. There is one simple reason why we need low frame rate compensation. Displays can only vary their refresh rate within a certain window, for example 48 to 144 hertz. If you wanted to run a game below the minimum supported refresh rate, say at 40 fps, when the minimum refresh rate is 48 hertz, normally you'd be stuck with standard screen tearing or stuttering issues like you get with a fixed refresh monitor. That's because the GPU's render rate is out of sync with the display's refresh rate. Low frame rate compensation, or LFC, extends the window in which you can sync the render rate to the refresh rate using adaptive sync. 
When the frame rate falls below the minimum refresh rate of the monitor, frames are simply displayed multiple times, and the display runs at a multiple of the required refresh rate. In my previous example, to display 40 FPS using LFC, every frame is doubled, and then this output is synced to the display running at 80 hertz. You can even run games at say 13 FPS and have that synced to a refresh rate. In this case, the monitor would run at 52 hertz to exceed the 48 hertz minimum, and then every frame would be displayed four times. The end result is LFC effectively removes the minimum refresh rate of adaptive sync displays, but for LFC to be supported, the monitor needs to have a maximum refresh rate that is at least double the minimum refresh rate. This is why not all FreeSync monitors support LFC. Some come with just 48 to 75 hertz refresh windows, which doesn't meet the criteria for LFC. However, in the case of FreeSync 2, every monitor validated for this spec will support LFC, so you won't have to worry about the minimum refresh rate of the monitor. This wouldn't be a look at FreeSync 2 in 2018 without exploring what FreeSync 2 monitors are actually available right now and what monitors are coming up. Currently there are only three FreeSync 2 monitors on the market and all are from Samsung's Quantum Dot lineup, the C27HG70 and C32HG70 as 27 and 32 inch 1440p 144Hz monitors respectively, along with this stupidly wide C49HG90, a double 1080p 144Hz monitor. All three are Display HDR600 certified. Set for release this year are several other options. We have the BenQ EX3203R, a 32-inch curved VA panel with a 144Hz refresh rate and 1440p resolution, certified for display HDR400. The AOC Aegon AG322QC4 is another FreeSync 2 monitor, and it appears to use the same panel as the BenQ monitor we were just talking about, so it has the same specifications. Then there's the Philips 436M6VBPAB. Seriously, who named that monitor? which is a 43-inch 4K 60Hz display sporting display HDR1000 certification. Yep, that's right, 1000 nits of peak brightness in this panel. The last thing I'll mention here is GPU support. FreeSync 2 requires an AMD graphics card, as you might expect of an AMD technology, and according to this list, everything from AMD's RX 200 series or newer, with the exception of a few products, is supported. There's also a bunch of APUs with integrated graphics that will work as well. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, FreeSync 2 monitors will still work and you will get most of the benefits including support for HDR. What you won't get is adaptive sync support, so if you want that, you'll need to find a monitor with NVIDIA's equivalent G-Sync HDR technology. That's it for this exploration of FreeSync 2. I hope you all learned something and now have all the information you need for this upcoming next wave of gaming monitors. Consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to improve our display testing and I'll catch you in the next one.